Happy Wednesday. We are back <laughs> and we're live and we are so excited to be here after last week's glitches. So we're hoping that we have no issues this week and we can go over our fun topics. So thank you guys for joining us. My name is Bola Shokumbi. I'm the founder and CEO of Clever Girl Finance. And uh, we are an online financial education platform empowering women to live life on their own terms and achieve financial wellness. And we do this live every single Wednesday, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And there is a replay posted on Instagram and LinkedIn and Facebook as well. So I'm going to have Yasmir introduce herself. Hi, everybody. I am Yasmir. I am the social media content creator for Clever Girl Finance, and I live in New York. New York. Yes. So we are going to be talking about the very interesting Netflix documentary um, called The Tinder Swindler. <laughs> And we're going to be talking about four money lessons that you can learn from this Tinder swindler and this documentary. Um, I'd love for you to share in the comments where you are joining us from and if you have had the opportunity to watch this documentary or not. I know there's another one trending along the same theme. I think it's called... Um, Something about Anna, I forget what what the full name is. I haven't watched that one. But yes, share Neither. in the comments, tell us where you're joining from. And um, tell us if you have seen the Tinder Swindler. And be, while you guys are telling us where you're joining from, be sure to check out the Clever World Finance book series. I uh, would love for you to support us by picking up these books. You can find them everywhere your books are sold. You can find them um, at your local library or you can have them order them and they're available as eBooks and audiobooks. So there's the side hustle guide, uh, the investing book, Grow Your Money, and the foundational finance book, Clever Girl Finance. So be sure to support us. And if you haven't already checked out the planners, they are available on clevergirlfinance.com. We have a business planner and a life planner, and they're both undated, so you can start using them anytime. Okay, I see a few people. Um, hi, Elizabeth from Toronto. Hey, Nafisa from Antigua. Thanks for always being here, Nafisa. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> Joyce. Okay, so Yasmer is going to give us some context for those of you who have not seen the documentary. And don't worry, um, there are a few spoilers here, but it does not take away at all <laughs> from you watching the documentary. It's still as interesting if I tell you the story and you go watch it. So, yeah, we're going to talk about that. Yes, yes. Uh, definitely worth watching even after today. Um, there are lessons to be learned and today we're going to talk about four. Um, but just to give you like a little synopsis of the um, documentary, it's basically about a man who fakes to be the son of a real billionaire. Um, and he goes on Tinder with these uh pictures of him living a very lavish lifestyle um and that is his way to attract women um once he once they connect on tinder um he'll invite them to like a restaurant to fly on on his private jet like immediately after meeting and then once he gets comfortable um and gains oh once the woman gets comfortable and 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 the guy his name is Simon Lviv um gains the women's trust then he'll start asking for money um so much money that as a result um because the women are in love with him and trust him um they take out loans thinking that he's going to pay them back but he never does and unfortunately these women get stuck with hundreds of thousands of dollars in in debt Yes. Yeah, so, you know, the Tinder swindler is essentially about a scam artist <laughs> and his scam is making women fall in love with him. And then he leverages that emotion to get them to take out loans and take on debt to help him continue to live his lavish life lifestyle. And basically, as he he's kind of setting up a cycle where by the time one woman finds out she's being scammed, he already has another woman in the pipeline 
falling in love with him. And, mm -hmm. you know, he, he would share pictures on his Instagram and in his Tinder account of him, of his private jet, him, you know, living his best life. And, you know, just to clarify, this is nothing against Tinder or online dating apps. I know lots of people who have met like incredible people and built incredible relationships um, on online dating platforms. And, you know, this is something that happens to both men and women, <laughs> right? Even mm -hmm. though we commonly yeah. hear the stories more so with women, but it is just an incredible story. And so, you know, it, it is also an extreme story, but there are some lessons to learn from them, especially in relationships and when emotions and feelings get involved. Sometimes it can cloud our judgment, right? And these women were falling in love with this super charming guy who was telling them, I love you. You're so beautiful. Mm -hmm. I want to spend my life with you. And they were planning their lives around this scam artist, uh, even though there were many red flags. <laughs> there were many red yeah. flags, but they were planning their lives around this scam artist. And right when they're falling in love, he's like, you know, I, I couldn't access my millions and my billions because someone tried to kill me and my security system has, um, my security team has put my finances in lockdown and I need to pay for my jet and my hotel. I just needed to take out $40,000. I'm going to give it back to you next week. And then next week comes around, oh, somebody else tried to kill me. And so I can't access my bank account, you know, because of security reasons. And I need to $25,000 I need. So he pushes that envelope as far down the table as he can until the girl is like, listen, stop. Yep. I cannot anymore. And I think on average, the three women that he scammed that were in the um, show, and there's several more, but the three women um, he scammed uh, were, I think on average, they owed about $250,000 of credit mm -hmm. cards and loans that they had taken out for him to live his best life. So we're going to talk yeah. about red flags, <laughs> things you should keep in mind. Everyday relationships, this can happen. It doesn't have to be a $40,000 scam, but it can be a scam. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, some individuals are just manipulative in general. They may not be as bad as Simon Levev, but some men, some women, different people are just, they know how to get you to do things that you should not be doing, you, you don't want to do. So let's talk about that. Yes, the um, first lesson red flag that we want to look for is um, uh, love bombing. And um, according to a New York Times article titled, What is Love Bombing? Um, it entails a grand romantic gesture in the early days of a relationship. So you just met this person and um, they're telling you things like, oh my gosh, I can see myself falling in love with you and marrying you and having kids living together, traveling together. Um, all these things very, very on in the relationship. And, you know, it, it it's weird <laughs> um but some people don't recognize that red flag um right away because it's something so positive um and then according to the article by the new york times um love bombing comes more so from men sometimes women but for the majority of time it's it's the men doing the love bombing yeah. So this is when you meet someone, a guy, a girl, somebody, and they are just like within a few days in Simon Lebeb's case, the Tinder swindler, it was within a few hours, but let's talk about normal scenario within a few days. Wow. You're so beautiful. Wow. I can imagine living my life with you. Wow. This may sound ridiculous, but I see you as the mother of my children, <laughs> that kind of stuff. And it's like flowers being delivered. Oh, you got a beautiful text message. Oh, he's thinking about you at 1am sending you messages. That is love bombing. It's an overwhelming expression of just emotion towards you. And you're like, Oh, I have butterflies. This person really likes me. And this is what Simon was good at. Even though with the first girl, there was a major red flag. So, she um, goes on Tinder, meets this guy, and he invites her to come have coffee with him at his hotel. And she Googles him. Of course, he has a fake profile tied to a real billionaire. And so she assumes that she he is the billionaire son because when she goes on his social media, he's living the life. He has the private jet. He has the designer clothes. He has the watches. He has the fancy cars. So she goes to meet him. And then within that two hours of meeting him, he's like, oh, we're, I'm going somewhere else in Europe. Do you want to come with me on my private jet? red flag. <laughs> yeah. I don't know about you, but I was told when I was a kid, don't ever go with strangers, never get in a stranger's <laughs> car. And there's this strange man I met on the internet telling me to um, get on his private jet to another country. 
And she went and she texts her friends and they're like, oh, girl, yes, girl. Wow, girl. My friends were like, Paula, get your bag and get the hell. I'm going to call your mom. Get the hell out of there, right? <laughs> so that was the red flag. But again, love bombing. She was just so en enamored by this charming, extremely mm -hmm. charming um, individual that she fell for it. So in terms of your personal finances, love bombing is a real thing, especially in relationships where you may find yourself making decisions that you wouldn't really make. Oh my God, you're so beautiful. Oh wow. He thinks I'm so beautiful. I'm just going to cover dinner. I'm just going to cover this trip. I'm just going to yeah. cover this vacation. I'm just going to, but you know, your budget can accommodate that, cannot accommodate that. You know, you can't afford this. You know, you have bills to pay. You know, you have a debt repayment plan, but this guy is so charming or this girl is so mm -hmm. charming or whoever is so charming. And, you know, everything, all your senses get lost that you're now you're paying for bills that you have no business paying for, for it. You've been a victim of love bombing. <laughs> so mm -hmm. keep that in mind. You want to have your wits around you. Always be objective. Like when it's important to recognize this person is showering me, showering me with all these emotions and all these feelings. Okay. It's nice. They may be genuine, but you know what? I'm sticking to my goals. I'm sticking to my plan. I'm going to have my guard up for a little bit. I don't believe that two hours is enough time to fall in love with somebody to get on anybody's private jet. I don't give a damn who you are, <laughs> but that's just my own two <laughs> Yes, and in, in the the example of the documentary, as you mentioned before, Bola, um, said, he, <laughs> uh, yes, exactly. Um, in the documentary, um, Simon was using other women's money to pay for his dates. Yes, um, yeah, which is terrible. Um, <laughs> I feel so bad for those women, um, but this this. This is actually a good segue to the second um, red flag is to not go by um, the money flashing or the personality you see on um, social media. A lot of it is fake. And in Simon's um, situation, um, he he was putting it out there that he had this very lavish lifestyle. He was in um, very fancy cars, um, yachts, um, he had name brand clothes, mm -hmm. um, designer clothes. And um, I think last week I did check, he does have his Instagram up. He's banned from um, a lot of the dating websites, yeah. Yeah. but he does have an Instagram account. If you're curious to see, um, check <laughs> it out, but don't message the guy, don't follow Hello yeah. with him. <laughs> He's trouble. So funny story. My friend actually watched a documentary and she went and found him on Instagram and she was looking at his stories. And I think she made a comment or asked a question and he blocked her. <laughs> I think she was like, Aren't you the Tinder swindler? <laughs> But I mean, he's back in business. I, you know, he swindled these women and he swindled, yeah. they said he swindled people in total of about $10 million, but he's been doing it across mm -hmm. countries in Europe. And then it's hard to catch someone because of all the bureaucracy and, you know, laws across country. And then also the laws around swindling are, are lax because at the end of the day, those women gave him the money willingly. Right. And there's no crime. If you give somebody you love money, <laughs> Even though it was a scam, it's hard to prove it. So he's still out there doing what he does. Um, Andrea said, hold on to your pocketbook. Yeah. <laughs> hold on to your pocketbook. <laughs> That's funny. Um, yeah, so just it's just important to be very careful. So what's the next, next point, the next lesson? Yes, um, this is an obvious one, <laughs> but don't take out loans for someone that you just met. Um, again, the, to, to reiterate the women in the documentary, because um, they believe that Simon's lifestyle was real, that he was the son of a billionaire, um, because they loved them, they were willing to take out larger amounts of loans to help him, um, when in reality, he was just scamming them um and, and the thing about doing that um with someone you met or anyone in, in general like in your family in a relationship like when you take out loans um for someone um that you love 
probably won't get that back. Um, but in yeah. this case, yeah, because it's a gift. <laughs> if you loan money or take out loans, like it's pretty much a gift. But um, yeah, in this situation, uh, it, it was just, they were just freely and willingly um, taking out these loans and they didn't realize what he was doing until that 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 loan grew overwhelmingly overwhelm overwhelmingly <laughs> large yeah so the first lesson was beware of love love bombing the second lesson was be mindful of what people project on social media and the third lesson is don't take out large loans for someone you just met i think the first loan came within a few days <laughs> a few days of meeting yeah. him and it was the setup right people who are manipulative people who know how to get other people to give them what they want they they know how to ask you where it can be difficult for you to say no for so mm -hmm. in simon's situation he's like you know probably along the lines of i have no money I, i'm stranded I have nowhere to sleep. I can't pay. They're going to take me to jail, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. It was a desperation move. That was his angle, calling the girls late when they're tired and they're not quite about their wits, sending them pictures of somebody attacking his bodyguard, saying, Peter is down. Someone tried to kill us. Someone just attacked us. You get afraid, mm -hmm. especially when this person has already love bombarded you with, oh, you're amazing. I love you. You're the woman of my dreams. I'm going to marry you. You're like, oh my God, I need to help this guy. And there was hesitation on their behalf, but because he he was pushing the idea of desperation, I need help now, they had to quickly make the decision, right? And they end up taking out, and he tested them with a small amount compared to his lifestyle of like ten to $40,000. And he saw that they were willing to do this. And so he built this whole facade of, I'm being attacked, but then there are more attacks and more attacks. And my dad is a billionaire and this money is absolutely nothing. I will give it back to you. It's not a big deal. Look at my private jet. My watch costs more than everything that you are giving me. He downplayed the significance of what they were doing, but he planned mm -hmm. it out in such a way that for several months, he was able to get money from these people. That's a master swindler. There are other people who are just emotional manipulators and that is their that's what they do well, right? They do this thing mm -hmm. so well, right? And it could come from, you know, when you think about relationship, relationships, a partner being jealous of you, not wanting you to succeed, feeling intimidated by your success. And so I'll give you a personal example. Uh, several years ago, before I got married, I used to date someone. And while I was dating, I got my first job. I saved money for my first home down payment, $15,000. And this guy was just not doing a lot with himself. He just... It was lazy. He was lazy. And he was watching me saving and working. And eventually I saved my $15,000 and I'm ready to make my home down payment. And um, I take him to go see the condominium I wanted to buy. And this was like maybe four or five days to closing. Right. And I don't know if it was jealousy or just like he felt like he was generally manipulative. He was also very extremely charming, extremely charming, right? Why don't you have a job? Here are some beautiful flowers because you're so beautiful. Let's talk about my job. Let's talk about you, girl. You're beautiful. That kind of charming. Um, <laughs> um, and so about four or five days before I was going to close, you know, he knew how much the house was costing. He knew how much I had saved for the down payment. On the day of closing, I had to give them the check for the the cashier's check for the $15,000. And he's like, oh, can you just loan me $15,000? I have a business idea, mm -hmm. you know? And I'm like, look at this fool. I'm closing in four days. You don't have a job. You want me to loan you this $15,000? You've been watching me save. Are you out of your mind? You know what? Let's break up. We're done. Oh. <laughs> that is it. <laughs> and so, <laughs> imagine if I had given this guy that $15,000. I would never oh. have gotten that money back. And I would never have been able to buy that apartment. And he was very charming. Like the mm -hmm. way he asked me was like, I have something I need to do today. And I'm going to get the money by Friday. And it's like so important. It's like, and I'm like, no, I, and absolutely not. Hmm. If you love me, actually, I don't love you that much. <laughs> I want to buy my house. 
<laughs> so, you know, and this is a day to day situation. So Simon is, is, is a master. And then this guy I was dating, I guess he's a what was the word for the novice? Right. But in every <laughs> stage, there is a manipulator that you can come across that may want to take advantage of you. So for me, it was being clear on I wanted to buy this house. Right. And you don't first of all, you don't have a job. Even if I wasn't buying a house, you have no way to pay me back. My mom taught me. <laughs> <laughs> that some men <laughs> just don't want to be yeah. good right and so i already had the red flag up that you you haven't you, you're not making an effort to find a job you don't have a job and now you want me to loan you fifteen thousand dollars it's not going to happen so it's really really important um andrea said um going back to the the comment we made about simon saying my watch is more expensive than the loan you're taking. She says, sell your watch and call your daddy for the money. That's what the girl should have told Simon. How about you sell your watch? And what happened was that he did give her the watch, right? Did you see mm -hmm. that, Yasmir? And she yes, tried to yes. sell it. It was and fake. It was fake. <laughs> it was fake. It was a fake Rolex or a fake whatever. So, um, yeah. So lesson number three do not take out large loans for people you just met even if you did not just meet them we could have been best friends for 25 years girl you ain't got a job we could have been we could be dating for the last 10 years you don't have a job i'm not taking out a loan for you that you don't have a way to pay back as andrea mm -hmm. said write out your business plans and go to the bank <laughs> and <get a> loan. <laughs> so let's talk about the next tip <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, the next um, tip is to not share too much personal information with someone that you just met. Again, something that's obvious, but people do fall for it. Um, the women were sharing a lot of details way too quickly. Um, they were sharing um, bank account information, passports, like everything. And this is just made Simon's job of scamming them like super easy. Um, so beware of that, you know, in in like I don't want to say real life, that was real life, but um in in other situations, like don't talk about money right away because you don't know the person, you don't know what they're up to. So um when dating someone, just keep it light um and just save the the financed conversations until the, the relationship gets serious yes yeah, so you know your personal information especially if you've just met the person you want to keep it personal like you know i personally don't recommend a first date at your house we're gonna meet somewhere in public where there's other people right and mm -hmm. you know if the first girl i believe he had her passport information within the two hours because she was flying on the private jet with him to another country um, when they were applying for loans, he was asking for their information so he could help to expedite it, you know, call his dad, somebody he knows to help get it moving. Um, he knew one of the girl's mother's addresses. So towards the end of the scam, as each girl is realizing they're being scammed and they're seeing him with other women on social media or they're getting calls from other women, they start to say, Simon, I want my money back. And he's like, I'm going to ruin your life. I'm going to destroy you. I have all your information. I have your passport. I have your address. I have your mother's address. One girl moved from the country she was in to her home country to stay with her mom because she lost everything. And Simon had her mother's home information because she'd given it to him. So, you know, again, when someone is love bombing you, Sometimes it's very strategic. Simon was strategically distracting these women with his love bombing, with his flowers, with his gifts, while collecting information and creating profiles on these women. And a lot of times when you look at just regular relationships, let's put crazy Simon aside, but you look at regular relationships that don't go well. When someone tends to have the upper hand, it's because during the good times of the relationship, they were keeping all this, gathering all this information about you that when things go wrong, they now decide they're going to use it against you, right? Mm -hmm. um, so especially people that you just met, credit card information, social security cards, even your date of birth, <laughs> until you build a certain level of trust yeah. and you also know about this person too, don't hand over your personal information. Um, you know, this is the day and age of scams and scammers, right? Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. there's 
there's someone I, I once I've said this story before, but I once had somebody walk into a bank branch in a state I've never been into with my personal information and they withdrew my bank account. They went in as me just with a fake picture and everything. Mm -hmm. And so it's easy to get your information out there because we're online. But if you can help it when it comes to just intentionally giving it away, you want to avoid doing that. Um, you know, life is crazy. Relationships can be crazy. Meeting new people mm -hmm. can be crazy, but it's worth, you know, it's worth, it makes it worth having your guard up, right? There are good people out there. Um, it's certainly worth pursuing a relationship if you want to have one, if you want to be with somebody, but it's okay to have your guard up for a while and to be objective, right? If the person's asking you information about yourself, ask them about themselves too. And Simon was a pro because he already, he had this huge, he, it, it was crazy. He had like his friends were in on the scam. He had this huge life and persona and name, right? That he had created for himself. He was such a scam artist, but again, the red mm -hmm. flags were there, you know, get on my mm -hmm. jet, loan me 40,000, you know, and unfortunately people get carried away going back to point number two about don't be carried away about, about by what people show you on social media. You know, those women are like, Oh my God, this guy is rich. He's got money. Let me see what I can do to get mm -hmm. in. You know, that doesn't always work. You can make your own money. Right. Um, so be very careful ladies. <laughs> Yes. Um, so, okay. um, I, last thing I wanted to say was that, um, you know, we're, we're on the outside looking in. So it's very easy to judge these women, but it can happen to anyone. Um, those uh, red flags, especially if you haven't had that experience, are not obvious. Um, and it just makes the scammer uh, just take advantage of any vulnerabilities um, that that a woman may have, or vice versa too. Um, but yeah, it's not to say like, well, like you mentioned, you know, don't let that keep you from dating. But you know, just keep these lessons in mind. Yes, you know, it it can happen to anyone. There are some scams that are just so foolproof that I'm sure I could fall for them because I, I just wouldn't know. But it's important to just have your wits about you. And if your gut is telling you that something is not right, you know that you know that whole saying about a woman's intuition is never wrong, then just trust it. Uh, some of these scammers prey on people that they know don't have strong support systems or know that they're mm -hmm. in, a, in a group of people that are kind of all the same with like, you know, they're just not very objective because their friends, these, some of, I think a couple of these ladies did not mention anything about friends. And then one of them talked about friends, but wanting to keep the relationship close to herself. Uh, and then her friends were like, yeah, go girl. Wow. He's a billionaire. Goofy. Like you hit the jackpot. <laughs> and then, you know, like I know That's my terrible. own friends. I tell them I'm getting on a private jet to where some guy told me to, to loan him a hundred grand and I'm going to my bank account to get it. They're going to call the cops. They're gonna call. <laughs> they'll call somebody. Yeah. They'll call the psychiatric ward to come and commit me. They're gonna do something, right? Uh, and my mom dare not hear about that, right? So sometimes they prey on people who don't have the strong support systems. But the more you are aware of what's happening out in the world, the more you can equip yourself, even if you don't have the strong support system. So I definitely recommend watching that documentary. It's entertaining, um, mm -hmm. you know. And I, I really commend the women on the courage to come forward because it, it is embarrassing to know that you have been scammed, to feel like you have been scammed, right? To feel like someone has taken advantage of you. Um, it can be embarrassing mm -hmm. and you can feel depressed and sad, but these women are like, you know what? We're going to share our story so that number one, this guy gets some sort of punishment, which he hasn't quite gotten, but so that other women don't fall for this same nonsense. So I definitely commend those women, even though, you know, they fell victim yeah. to this mess. It was definitely hard, um, for them to do this, but they did. So yeah, that's what we wanted to cover today. So check out the Tinder Swindler. Yes. <laughs> and be sure to check out the Clever Wealth Finance books. Please support us. Oh, and we're going to be sharing some details about book four next week. We're finally ready to share. So exciting, my fourth yeah. book. So um, we were sharing this with you guys. And yeah, we're excited um, about it. So thank you guys so much for being here. Yasmer, did you have anything uh, thank you. else you wanted to share? 
thank you all for being here um, and hanging out with this um, fun conversation we were having. And I look forward to seeing you all next next Wednesday. Yes, we will talk to you next week. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye.